Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com with five reasons why nymphs are bad for you. Well, they're bad for you if you're male. No one really seems to care what happens if you're female because of course the nymph is female and no one ever talks about the nymph having like a girl's night out with the other nymphs. They usually are hanging out either in the woods or in the water like mermaid type things, or those are nymphs too. And and believe me, if you hang out with one, you're in trouble. And I'm gonna show you five, five musical reasons why hanging out with a nymph is bad news. <clears throat> so the first one is reason, that is musical is Mendelssohn's The Fair Melusina. Now here is uh, Claudio Abbado's recording. It's in his little Mendelssohn box. He did all the overtures. They're very, very good performances. So what's the story behind the fair Melusina? We need to know what it is. Melusina is a water nymph and she gets married, but there's a condition. There's always a condition. The condition is that her hubby must never see her on Saturday nights. And the reason is because on Saturday nights, she turns back into a mermaid, which is what she was originally. And if he should see her, he is forever either ensnared or he drops dead or something happens that's bad. And the marriage hence dissolves. When Mendelssohn was asked what the overture was about, Mendelssohn supposedly said, hmm, a misalliance. Well, there you go, it's a misalliance. Now, the Melusina myth or legend was very, very popular in the 19th century. I mean, Dvorak's Rusalka is that story. Ondine, all the different ones, Lortzings and all those other people who did it, it's that story. Ravel's Ondine in Gaspard de la Nuit is that story. It's one of the great stories. But there is also a sort of land version of the water version. And that's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this little chat, the land version why you should not hang out with a nymph. Before we get to the other ones though, I wanna mention just an interesting fact, you know, because one of the things that, that you are exposed to if you're in sort of the musicology biz, as I have sort of gotten into writing some scholarly papers on performance practice, but also going to the American Musicological Society meetings here in New York, which are quite wonderful by the way and fascinating, you begin to become conscious of feminist musicology. And much as I'm sort of not into isms, they make some very, very good points about culture in our musical history, not the least of which is the male bias in our musical culture. Most of the great composers, of course, were men. The musicologists were men. The guy who wrote the stories were men. The musicians were men, with a couple exceptions that I'm sure you know. But here's the point. This myth, this myth of the man possessed by the nymph is really just a wonderful, wonderful encapsulation of this, the idea of the femme fatale, right? The woman whose power over a man ultimately destroys him. And I think the feminist musicologists would argue with extremely good reason, the fear of male culture of being seduced or weakened or somehow somehow emasculated, if you want to call it that word, by feminine power, the real fear of feminine power. And what is feminine power? Well, Freud would tell us it's the power of procreation, which men don't have. And women need the male aspect in order to procreate. And anyway, it's all very, it's all very Freudian and very sort of, you know, primal. But there is this, this fear of, of the female aspect that you find as a dominant theme in our musical culture. And it tells us something about the fact that the masculine sort of, uh, the masculine cast of our musical culture is, is not entirely favorable towards women and female things, is it? So anyway, the wood nymph is a wonderful, wonderful illustration of that concept, of that psychological and cultural concept. And here are four wonderful examples. The first being Zdenek Fibich. Not exactly a household word, is he? He was 
the major Czech symphonist in Dvorak's lifetime. He wrote splendid music, three terrific symphonies that are part of this series too, by the way. Um, this is, um, there are different orchestras, but the conductor is, is Marek Stielitz, a terrific young Czech conductor who's done all three now Fibic symphonies. I've got a review coming of the third, which has just been released. And this excellent disc of symphonic poems, they include Othello, we all know that story, right? And Dvorak did an Othello too. Maybe we can do a talk about those. And then there's a symphonic poem called Zaboy, Slavoy, and Ludic. I have no idea what that's about. I reviewed this disc. It's an excellent disc, but I still have no idea what it's about. And now we're getting to the point. Here we go. Toman and the Wood Nymph. Well, now what's this one about? Toman is your average nice guy who finds out that his girlfriend has been unfaithful with some other guy, not a wood nymph. She's not a lesbian looking for a wood nymph to hang out with. She's with another guy. And Toman, in despair, throws himself into the embrace of the wood nymph who leads him on, depending on how you interpret the story, an erotic journey and a wild pagan dance or both. And in the end, he surrenders to the wiles of the wood nymph and lives forever in some sort of mythical twilight as a captive of the wood nymph. Now that's the symphonic poem. This story was also embraced and I would say substantially amplified by Vitislav Novak as a coupling to Nicotina. So if you remember that sequel story, which is, this is one of the ballets, which is the sequel to Daphnis and Chloe. If you have this disc, you also have Toman and the Wood Nymph. I have to say, though, the Novak piece is something special, let me tell you. It is far more advanced in idiom than Fibich, who was a Czech romantic of the Brahms Dvorak school and more of the Brahms school. His music is not notably, um, what would you say, ethnic sounding. And, but it is dramatic and it is an effective piece. Novak's is twice as long, it's 24 minutes, and it's, it's a monster piece. I mean, you've got the first half is sort of a portrait of Toman, the second half is what happens to him with the wood nymph, and it is voluptuous and erotic by turns. It's kind of like Delius or Bax with more rhythm I think maybe you would say the orchestration is very, very elaborate. The texture is rich and succulent. The music is just just luscious and decadent, and you're going to love it. So get a hold of Novox, Toman, and the Wood Nymph. Finally, what am I saying finally? Oh my God, it was in a second to finally. We do have backs. Nympholept. It's like, it's like lept. It's like kleptomania, right? Now, nympholept is not a disease. Nympholept means possessed by nymphs. And the story is, you know, basically the same as the other ones, except a little more vague and mythological. It's, you know, if you go into the mystic wood, the nymphs will capture you. Well, that's what happens. Someone goes into the mystic woods and the nymphs capture them. I'm going to play a, a minute of this or so, just so you can get a feel for its Celtic twilightness. This was not performed in Bax's lifetime. It was only performed or premiered in 1961, and probably at very few times since. Chandos has a recording of it. This Naxos recording with the Fourth Symphony, the overture to a picaresque comedy, which is a wonderful work, by the way. 
um, is with David Lloyd Jones and the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. It's a great disc, get a great series of Bach's symphonies and orchestral works. You should hear Nympholeptes. It's really quite, quite, you know, this is where nymphomania, by the way, comes from. You know, nymphs have this urge to, you know, have lots and lots and lots and lots of sex. And so females who do that are called nymphomaniacs. It comes from this nymph business, right? And so here you go, nymphomania, back style. Finally, there is, of course, the great discovery of Sibelius in the 1990s and 2000s. The wood nymph! And it's the same story all over again. You know, he who gives his heart to a nymph will never get it back. And Sibelius' story is really, I think, uh, Sibelius, of course, is of all these composers, was the one who had the most personal style. He was probably the greatest genius of the batch. And it's probably safe to say, and the wood nymph was just sitting there unperformed for his entire life after 1899. And it was discovered and dusted off and finally published in a critical edition by Breitkopf von Hertel. And now it's out there for all of us to enjoy. It's quite fabulous. And it's also a major work. It's about 20, 24 minutes in this performance by the Helsinki Philharmonic under John Sturgard's. And wowie wow wow, it's a hot thing. It has a knightly character symbolized by hunting music, and there's a erotic interlude, and it just gets darker and darker as his heart is oppressed and seized by the power of the nymph. And it ends with a grand nymphomaniacal climax of of extraordinary darkness and atmosphere and power with the roiling bass drum roll that goes on in typical Sibelius fashion for like the last 10 minutes of the piece and all the fun string tremolos and you know repetitious primal mythological mythological Kalevala like tunes although this has nothing to do with Finnish mythology at all or the Kalevala it's just that same story about the oppressive hypnotic, irresistible attraction of female erotic power. And what could be bad about that? Really, seriously. I don't know what these guys were afraid of. Anyway, here are five pieces that you should compare and contrast. They make a wonderful little nympho collection, you know, because you get to hear the same theme treated from the early Romantic period up until the early decades of the 20th century, which gives you a hundred years of, of nymphs and nymphs being their usual captivating and oppressive and dangerous selves. So to recapitulate, you get Mendelssohn, Die schöne Melusina, you know, the overture slash symphonic poem, which is about a mer-nymph, shall we say. Zdenek Fibich, the fabulous Toman and the Wood Nymph, to be followed by Novak's fabulous Toman and the Wood Nymph, Bax's Nympholept, and finally Sibelius's The Wood Nymph. Five reasons, as promised, why it's not a good idea to mess around with a nymph. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you. Take care.